Good morning, Malibu. We are so pumped to be back this Friday. morning. Uh, <laughs> after a week away, I'm Shayla Gerardin. And I'm Alex Fisher. Grab a cup of coffee and don't move. Good morning, Malibu starts right now. Well, good morning, everyone. It is Friday, TGIF. It's Friday. It's we Friday. were gone for a week. Yep. We are in Austin, Texas, lost in Austin. Uh, got to experience all of that weather. That was fun. Lots of rain, but we're back. Yeah. We're back in Malibu. I missed Good Morning Going Malibu. back to the rain, being from California, we experience apparently Austin, Texas, uh, largest rainstorm finest. in 73 years or something like that. We had 15 and a half inches of rain in six mm -hmm. hours. It was crazy. And but especially going from Malibu where, you know, I, one inch of rain is and newsworthy. And we're in a drought. <laughs> and then uh, experience Austin. It makes me makes you appreciate Malibu. Oh, absolutely. We missed it. But, but anyways, happy Friday morning. Let's start the morning off with a Labrador Retriever. Retrieved from the open waters. Take a look at this. Six sailors of a yacht club were sailing off the coast of Naples when they spotted a yellow lab in the middle of the ocean. There he is right there. He was pulled to safety and tired and trembling with fear, but he was cuddled and wrapped in a sailor's jacket right there. And that's not all for the pup. He also appeared later on in the week on an Italian talk show and was instantly a huge hit. Isn't he cute? I think he's adorable. So this guy is a star. He's, he's a famous. star. I, I love it because he's just, you know, casually swimming through uh, the Italian coast. Yeah. Like, where did he come from? I Well, that's what I was wondering. I was like, because the, the sailor said that there were there there was no boat in sight, and he was just in the middle of the ocean just treading water, and they picked him up. So we have no remarkable. idea how long he was out there. Luckily, the Italian waters tend to be a little bit warmer than the Pacific Ocean. That is true. So, so that, good. you know, was in his favor. Uh, but I mean, props still. for him, just getting his morning swim in. Oh, yeah. Uh, off the coast of Italy, casual. I that's really a remarkable story. I, I will say though, they found this I, dog. I have a yellow lab at home. Her okay. name's Lucy, and she loves the water, and so she loves to swim. So Lucy could brave the Italian well, coast. Well, I think she could, but you know, and, and this dog, I mean, is a trooper. I mean, being in the waters uh, in the ocean is hard enough. So yeah. it's not like it's a swimming pool. So hmm, anyway, I don't so know. He's, I'm, he's, I'm curious. We'll have to let Lucy go first. the celebrity. <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, switching little gears a bit, uh, we just had Halloween, and here's one Halloween costume that will definitely make you do a double take. So this father-son duo had a very clever costume. Paul and Bobby Evers dressed up as each other for Halloween. So son transformed into father and vice versa for the day, and the likeness is unbelievable. Whoa. I had to stare Whoa. at this picture for a solid minute trying to determine who was who, and to yeah. be honest, I'm still not really sure which one is which. Um, but what I did find funny is they said the transformation wasn't easy and Paul, uh, the father, had to wear fake eyelashes to try and match <laughs> his son. And speaking from experience, Alex, oh, that is oh, not course, an yeah. easy feat. Once once you do fake lashes, like you've you've crossed over, that's commitment. Oh, that, that can be a struggle. I'm gonna have to look at that closer and take a look at that. I mean, still, I mean, I was looking at that going, all right, what's the big deal? It's they, just, it's the same picture exactly. side by side. When I but first looked at it, I thought it was two of the same photos. And it, it's a mind game, really. Because oh, even it after is. watching it for several minutes, I'm, I'm still at a loss of which one is which. I mean, we know what he's going to look like when he grows up. That's oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, seriously, that is unbelievable. I think he has a job maybe lined up for, uh, you know, Hollywood. Yeah, uh, makeup artist or getting something in for the, the makeup movies. artist industry. That is unbelievable. <laughs> They've got it down. All right, that's unbelievable. Well, grab a tissue for this next story. It was a dream that seemed far, far away, but is coming true for one man who is dying from a rare form of cancer. 32-year-old Daniel Fleetwood was told by doctors this summer he had just months to live. And with the Star Wars release a week before Christmas, the lifelong fan feared he wouldn't be around to see it. Well, his wife started a campaign to let him see the movie, which got the attention of Disney Studios and Hollywood stars. Now, this week, Fleetwood received a call from the director of the movie and said the unedited version of Star Wars will be delivered on Thursday. So he'll be able to watch the movie, the unedited version, in his home. This and, is such a, like a bittersweet story because it it, it, it really it's so is. touching, but I'm so glad to hear that Disney is going to go for it, going to yeah. let him watch the unedited version, uh, you know, right before it comes out. It's really sweet and uh, it's really precious. Star Wars is a big deal. I mean, this is a yeah. big movie. I mean, everyone is talking about it. I mean, people have been 
I mean, websites crashed when people were allowed to buy, yeah, the, getting buy, those tickets. buy tickets. You Everyone know? went crazy. Everyone wants to see this. And so I feel like uh, the studios is kind of like, we're going to keep this kind of quiet. Yeah. We don't want to really release this mm -hmm. to anyone. And they already have the publicity. Totally. And, and I'm so, sure it's very a very protected film at this point. Oh, absolutely. And so for them to go out of their way and allow him to see this, I think it, it shows, mm -hmm. it shows I think to a lot of us that Hollywood cares about their fans. Yeah. You know, and this is an experience and they're really catering to this, especially. It's a uh, good Hollywood moment. And I'm glad to see them, you know, take that extra step, go out of their way and, and share it because yes. it, it is a big deal. Well, I am I hope he will enjoy the movie. I'm sure he will uh, since he's I, such a big I fan. I can't wait to see it. And I know we'll enjoy it <laughs> when it comes <laughs> out. Well, we have one heartwarm more heartwarming story for you to set off the morning right now. Take a look at this video clip. On Valley News Live and up on ValleyNewsLive.com. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What? Oh. <laughs> what so I'm assuming you already know what's going on. But I have something to tell you. I've loved you since I first met you. Okay? You're my best friend, my soulmate, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. So you never know what's going to happen when you go live on television. And KLVY's Christy Larson was in for a very pleasant surprise when her boyfriend and now fiance, Jaron Connor, proposed. And of course, she said yes. So the couple have been dating for five years, uh, which is a good amount of time. But even still, I'm thoroughly impressed. I have to say that takes some serious courage there. Oh, absolutely. To, to do that proposal on live television, even if you've talked about it before. Oh, man. That's, that's pretty nerve-wracking. I, I would... Be, I'd be sweating. <laughs> oh, well, best of luck to both of them. I mean, that's great. But I have to say, you know, as anchors and reporters out there in television, we like to know what's coming next. We like to know what's going on. Yeah. And every once in a while, we'll get thrown the curveball. You know, there might be a police chase, breaking news or something like that. But when you have someone like something like this happen, that you are is, not prepared. That throws you a curveball, so. for sure. And I love how in the beginning of the clip, you see her and she's giving her morning report. And he walks on in the corner and, and she's like, what are you doing what here? You doing? Like, yeah. it, it, it throws you for one. But she handled it with she stride. Did. And, uh, she did. That's exciting. That's a good surprise. It is a good surprise. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I know a lot of people are kind of, you know, bad about this. But I feel like it's starting to look a little bit like Christmas. It's starting to feel a little bit like Christmas. It's cooler out We're there. We're not jumping the gun It's at not all. feeling like summer anymore. But I'm curious, Logan, is the cooler temperatures going to stick around? Or are we going to go back to summer? Well, Alex, you are right. You can keep that sweater on. It is Good. definitely time to break out those cool weather clothes. Uh, currently in Malibu, it is sunny and chilly at 60, 63 degrees. Uh, actually feels like 61 out there, and we will have northeast winds coming in at 21 miles per hour and humidity of 25%. Now, if you're thinking about catching some waves this morning, you might want to consider waiting it out a bit. Conditions are poor with one to two foot swells at Zuma, and the next high tide will be at 618 p.m. Now let's take a look at the regional temps. Uh, in Thousand Oaks, we have 59 degrees, 55 in Malibu, 52 in Calabasas, and 55 in Santa Monica. And now moving into the three-day forecast, let's take a look at what we have for this weekend. Now, the weekend's temperature should be mild, great for any outdoor activities. Uh, today's high is 75, the low is 52. Saturday, the high will be 78 with a low of 50. And Sunday, we have a high of 74 with a chilly low of 51 degrees. Alex, Shayla, do you guys have anything fun planned for the weekend with this nice weather we're going to be enjoying? I will be enjoying this cooler weather for sure. Mm. I'm excited. It's feeling like fall. We had rain. We had hail this we week. We had hail. I'm I know like, that did. I'm that like you. Crazy. I'm going into Christmas mode. It's a little early, but. Uh, well, there are some stores and, and stuff that are in the, already in the Christmas mood. But anyways, and Starbucks, come on. Red Cup. The Red Cups are here. Yeah, That's anyway. all we need. Yeah. Alex has got his sweater I've on. I've got my so. sweater on. I'm ready, you know, but I'm actually going home this weekend. It's my brother's birthday yesterday. My grandpa's birthday is today, so going home with them. That's and exciting. it's going to be nice because I'm just going to sit by the fireplace, do some homework, do some reading. Yeah. Because it's starting Recover to finally feel terms. like fall and winter, which is nice. But anyways. It's going to be it's going to be a good gonna weekend, be good. and I'm pumped weekend. about these temperatures. Well, don't go anywhere. When we get back, Exxon is under investigation, and Alexis is here to bring us the latest. And the president of the 10 Days campaign is here to tell us how we can bring clean drinking water to Rwanda. Stay with us. Six people are left dead after a fatal bus crash in North Little Rock, Arkansas. 
A charter bus driving on the I-40 went off the road and hit an overpass structure at 1 a.m. The police say there was a total of 22 people on the bus and the bus was going to Laredo, Texas from Michigan. Of the 22 passengers, eight survived injury free and were sent to a hotel while the others were rushed to the hospital. The cause of the accident is still under investigation. Now the gas company ExxonMobil is under investigation as well by the New York Attorney General. Exxon is being accused of withholding information regarding the risk of climate change to their shareholders and the public. ExxonMobil says they have included the business risks of climate change in their 10K plan and other reports for years. The company has received a subpoena requesting for any documents and information regarding climate change. Now the University of California Merced will be resuming classes today after the stabbings that shocked the campus. Freshman Fasil Mohammed stabbed four people on the campus Wednesday morning. Authorities found a two-page manifesto outlining his attack, including names of specific students. Fortunately, his plan did not reach his original intentions. Authorities say there is no reason to believe this is anything more than an upset student who took things to an extreme. Now we have Stacia here with sports. Thanks, Alexis. Adidas began an initiative to assist high schools in changing potentially harmful Native American mascots. The sports brand has pledged to financially help schools who are interested in changing their mascot or nickname. This initiative coincides with the White House Tribal Nations Conference, where 567 tribes will be represented. Adidas leads the charge to end the perpetuation of negative stereotypes and foster mutual respect among Native and non-Native students alike. The LA, and the LA Kings suffered a tough defeat last night. The Kings lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets last night 3-2. The LA Lakers are on a losing streak as well. While our LA teams are suffering losing streaks, Pepperdine dominated the competition in Thursday's matchups. Our Waves edged out Gonzaga in a thrilling five, five sets last night. The Waves and Bulldogs volleyed for power, taking al alternate victories over each set. The game came down to 13-13 in the final set, where the Waves refused to back down and won the game 15-13. Senior setter Becca Strelo led her team to victory on the court, posting her first triple-double of the season, while four freshmen put up kill scores in the double digits. If you didn't catch the game, women's volleyball will carry the momentum into their home game this Saturday. Our women's tennis team left a strong first impression on the opening day of the Kramer Invitational. The Waves won all five singles in both duo matches yesterday. Everyone will advance to the next round of competition today in the weekend-long tournament at Rolling Hills Estates, California. The competition includes top players from UCLA, USC, Washington, Baylor, Long Beach State, and Ohio State. To be a part of the success, you can follow at Waves Tennis for updates on the action. While Waves Athletics mostly take to the road this weekend, do not fear. Volleyball and basketball have you covered. Today, Waves Weekend Sports knocks off with men's basketball at 3.30 against Hawaii, and women's basketball kicks off their season at 7 tonight, playing Bethesda College. Saturday, women's volleyball keeps the momentum going with a game against the Portland Pilots. All right, thank you, Stacia. Well, refill your coffee cup. We have the latest in all celebrity news. And if you're looking for an opportunity to give back, don't go anywhere. Ali Baumgarten is going to be here explaining the 10 Days campaign, so stay tuned. <laughs> The tea we're about to spill is hot. People Magazine is reporting that singers and The Voice co-hosts Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani are in fact dating. According to People Magazine, Shelton's rep confirmed the recent relationship. The two stars are both judges on the NBC show The Voice and both ended their relationships earlier this year. 
Stefani and Gavin Rossdale separated in August after 13 years of marriage, and Shelton and Lambert divorced in July. I actually feel really, really happy for him because I felt he was really, really sad. Uh, and I was happy for going to Bonnie because I feel like her husband put up a lot. You know, he was sleeping around with trainees while she had two kids. Like, oh, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm always happy, like, when people in their relationships and they can find someone new. I think it's great. So good luck to them, and we'll keep you posted on the tea. Huh? Hey, last. But in other news, Luke Bryan scored big at this year's Country Music Awards. The country star took home the night's big prize, Entertainer of the Year, for the second year in a row at Wednesday CMA Awards in Nashville. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, everyone in heaven looking out for me, Brian said in his acceptance speech. Then he turned to his wife, Carolyn, and thanked her for her constant love and support. Well, Two years in a row? That's yeah, good. that is. Congrats to him. And also, we have um, some interesting news about a long-lost silent Disney film that has recently been rediscovered. Sleigh Bells is a 1928 cartoon starring the very first Disney character ever created, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Although Disney co-created the film, Universal owned the rights to Oswald. Contract disputes led Disney to leave Universal to start his own company, and out of that came Mickey Mouse. British Film Institute researchers rediscovered Sleigh Bells from its National Archive. Since then, Disney animators have digitally remastered the film, and Sleigh Bells will be publicly shown for the very first time in London, December 12th. I'm just trying to figure out why London, but not the U.S.? I know, right? But I mean, I'm guessing that that's just going to be the first airing of it, and then, who knows, it'll probably come to the U.S. like yeah, recently after that. I'm sure will be at that. the movies with Evan saying that movie. Too, I too. know. <laughs> it, it's a really cute, I saw a little clip of it, so, yeah. <laughs> well, in other news, Trevor Noah underwent an emergency appendectomy Wednesday. The 31-year-old new host of The Daily Show took the reins from Jon Stewart in August. Noah returned to the hit show Thursday and even told a few jokes about his experience with U.S. health care. What better way to experience the U.S. than to experience America's health care system for the first time, he joked. It was an interesting experience going through the emergency room, although I don't know if emergency room is the right term because, they wait, because the way they make you wait. Hmm. I don't know. I just saw a little clip he's kind of cute so <laughs> but that's interesting story so but that's a wrap that's all your celeb gossip for this week back to you Shayla and Alex thank Thanks, you guys. guys well anytime I hear that a new Disney film has been discovered oh yeah that makes it a great day oh, so of you know me you know, gotta have my Disney it's kind of neat too this is a long I mean this is a film that was long like made long long ago yeah if and you guys so, can discover any more Disney yeah, films just let us know I will be in the <laughs> audience all right well uh, don't go anywhere we're back with info on the 10 days campaign stay with us <laughs> Well, welcome back to Good Morning Malibu. We have Allie Baumgarten here with us today. She is the president of the 10 Days Campaign. Allie, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. being with us this morning. Yeah, Thanks so for we, having me. So the 10 Days Campaign, you know, a lot of students have seen this all over campus. It's, it's uh, you know, be kind of the talk right now. Um, and so uh, what inspired you to be a part of this campaign? Well, the 10 Days was started a few years ago at Texas A&M, and they wanted their friends to see that together our choices could really change the world. And one of my best friends is best friends with that guy. And so we kind of all bought into chain, it. Chain, yeah. a chain. Yeah, it's a That's chain awesome. reaction. Yeah, and I really just love what they do and really believe that, compelled by the love of Jesus, that we're called yeah. to respond. And it's a cool thing at Pepperdine to be able to get outside of where we are and to be a part of what God's doing in the nations. And it's a really tangible thing. Yeah. And so as soon as I heard that that's what we were doing, I was on board. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So. Great. Yeah. So these 10 days kick off on Monday, and even though most students here are familiar with it, can you go ahead and give us like a little bit of a backstory of uh, how we get involved, mm -hmm. what starts Monday, you know, what the 10 days is? Yeah, so 10 days. We're taking 10 days, November 9th through November 18th, to give up every drink but water. And then you donate all the money that you would have spent on coffee and tea and soda and everything else toward drilling a clean water well in Rohongo, Rwanda. So right. it's very simple. It's a simple idea. Pretty much drink water to give water. Um, people have a really hard time with that, with no coffee and tea. Um, Guys, I know. I know. I'm going to be coffee free. 
<laughs> that's gonna be you can do it's it. gonna be really you can do scary it. ten days. I apologize in advance. We're in it together. But what a lot of people don't understand is I mean, you might go out to a restaurant, you might go get a cup of coffee and it's only a couple dollars, but when you start doing that every day after you know, a week, 10 days, it starts to add up. It starts to add and up. So it I really was, adds up. I was really, you know, I was thinking about this going, because I'm like, okay, you give up uh, all your drinks for just, you know, 10 days. I mean, what is that going to be, like 10 bucks or something? I actually found that the average American spends $50 a week. $50. $50 a week on beverages. And you can see, and Shayla actually spends $97 <laughs> a week on, <laughs> on Starbucks, on, on Starbucks no, wait, alone. It, uh, but I mean, you when know, you, I'm glad to know because <laughs> Alex went ahead and put this together. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad sorry. To see, that, that was a joke. I was afraid you were going to make it $1,000 a week yeah, or no, something. No, no, no. So I'm going to be a little more realistic. This isn't too much. Um, if, yeah. if we, we have the I, real We have the real graph here. Um, we have a real graph we, we that'll should. hopefully come uh, uh, But if not, you can if, see if not, that I, undeniably, I first of all have a Starbucks addiction. Uh, but you guys even have a little quiz on your website where you can see how much you've spent in an average week. There's the, there's um, the there we one. go. Yeah. $30. There. So, Shayla, Ooh. you're still under the average. I'm still under average, average which yeah. is comforting. Okay. Uh, but even taking the quiz online, it was yeah. amazing to me. It was remarkable how much money mm -hmm. I'm spending um, on my Starbucks, on soda, mm -hmm. uh, and what a difference that can make. I think when when I took the calculations, it said that I would give a family water for over a year. Yeah, uh, yeah that's what's which crazy. Which is really convicting. And mm -hmm. when you really think about it, I mean, let's be real. You don't need, you know, some people say, oh, I need my coffee. It's more, I need my Coke or whatever it may be. Um, I mean, you can really, you can really just, you don't have to live with that stuff. You know, I mean, water, you have to live with water. So yeah. anyways. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, last year was the first year that you started this. I mean, or was it two years ago? Uh, I think it's been on campus for four years. Oh, so for but four years. But it gets bigger and better every year. Okay, so I mean, what? I mean, do you guys have a goal that you're trying to reach? Yeah, um, every year we kind of set it at ten thousand dollars. That would be the hope. Ten thousand dollars provides eight hundred people with clean water for a decade. Oh wow! Wow. For a decade, awesome. which is unbelievable. Um, and so that's our goal. And I think right now we're at about three thousand, and it hasn't okay. even started yet. Oh, so, wow. so fingers crossed, yeah. we're heading in the right direction. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, if a student decides like, they can't make it the full days, or if they they don't make the full the we full want, days, we take your money anyway. <laughs> exactly. So, how else can students get involved? Um, yeah. So, on the website, there's an option to pledge or to donate. Um, and so, we can we are selling T-shirts. There's like all sorts of ways you can do it. Just it's just money. <laughs> I mean, it, you don't have to do the 10 days, but and if if you could just remind us all how we can donate, we'd go. To, is there a website? Yeah. It's 10days.cc okay. slash universities slash Pepperdine. But if you just do 10days.cc, 10days .cc. super simple, super easy. there it easy. is. You can see on the screen right now, you just put your first last name, obviously, all your information, and then you can uh, take the Pepperdine. pledge from November 9th through November 18th. You pledge to give up everything but water and all that money that you uh, save from not spending uh, on drinks can provide clean water in Rwanda, which I think is a phenomenal campaign. It's awesome, and it's going towards a good cause. Going so when you're cause. having your morning struggles without your coffee, you know that that it's for a good reason. It's, it's worth it. Reason. Yeah, it's totally yeah. worth it. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. It's a great cause. So Pepperdine students, if you, even if you're thank not a Pepperdine you, student, check it out. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank yeah, you. Thanks again for joining us this week, guys. We'll see you right back here next, next Friday week. morning for Good Morning Malibu. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. That was so much fun. Uh, oh, that I was like. Great.